My guest has seen a baby's head three times the size it should be return to normal. And when he speaks, things are created. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Centuries have come and gone, offering wisdom and understanding throughout the ages. Today, there should be nothing beyond one's power to discover. And yet, the strange, unusual, and mysterious world of the supernatural defies understanding. Stay tuned for a unique and powerful investigation into a curious, undiscovered universe only on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth. My guest, Jim Watt, has seen miracles that few men on the face of this earth have ever witnessed. But there was a time, Jim, when you were kind of mashuga. That's a crazy, that means crazy. And you were kind of mashuga. You were in college and you were actually studying communism? That's right, Sid. Um, I was studying with a fellow student and uh, we got into it through the Red Dean of Canterbury, Hewlett. Johnson and we're studying about the Soviet, the Soviet Union and I was writing papers on it and my professor was saying if you think it's so all fired good why don't you go there which kind of shook me but I was in communism true but there came a point when you recognized there really was a God and communism says there's no such thing as a God so what did you do about it well I was in the Navy at the time and uh, I had joined the Navy by this, believing that if I went there, I could find a God if he was real. And uh, I read the Bible through in six weeks, and I did all kinds of things. And when I got to the book of Romans, he started to move on me, and he revealed himself to me, and then said, now go and tell your old friend, Vern McMahon, that you were studying communism with. You can't go that way anymore you now have a mandate from me to present me to people and my word. When I went out there, I could hardly say it because my, right. my denomination said religion is like your toothbrush. It's personal. You don't share it with anybody. And I was so nervous, I started to shake. I didn't know it was the Holy Spirit, so I had to cross my knees and hold on, and it was so embarrassing that finally I had to blurt it out. I said, Vern, I can't go communism anymore. I've made a commitment to God that I'm going to serve him according to his son. If he reveals himself to me in that moment, he came into my life and I was born again. What, what, what do you mean he came into your life and you were born again? <laughs> I can't. I, well, I, I, how, just a like light that? A switch came just on. Like that. It was just, I, 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 for three months I said, what happened? Why did you do it then? Why didn't you do it a month before? And, and it was, he said, if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And I had believed in my heart. I'd never told a living soul. So and when you actually said yes, it, it happened. Yes, I made a word of confession. Vern, as far as I'm concerned, I'm serving God according to Jesus so, Christ. So how'd your communist friend take to that? God filled that room with his presence so that we could hardly stand it. It was... I was so filled with joy, we were laughing, and he said, my God. Your, your if, communist friend even felt he it? Was felt it. He, he felt, felt it, too? The whole, the whole room was absolutely filled with it. He said, if I don't start laughing, I'll kill myself. I got TB. I can't stand <laughs> this. And he said, I don't even know what I'm laughing. That's the crazy thing about it. It's, had you ever seen God demonstrate mm. his, 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 his tangible presence like never, that before? Never, never. This was such a shock to me. It was so real that when I got out of that house, I didn't take a streetcar home. It was four miles from that place in East Victoria to James Bay where I lived. I ran that four miles. I went right through the Fall Bay Cemetery. There's a full moon at that time. And I said, God, I remember that old nursery rhyme, hi diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle. And with a little more oomph, I could jump over the moon. <laughs> <laughs> I think you could. But the, what, uh, what, what really blows me away is a little thereafter, you found out that there was even more available. And I didn't want it. What, what do you mean you didn't want it? I didn't want it. Mrs. I, listen, you didn't want I it. I didn't it's want God. anymore. What do you mean you I, didn't want I, it? I had so much of God when this lady said, now you need the baptism of the Spirit. I said, Mrs. Hicks, if you have to have it, you can have it. I've got so much of God, I don't know what to do with them. I don't want any more of God. And she said, well, will you come to my church and visit? 
Well, the church I was going to wasn't friendly to sailors. Victoria was lousy with them. So I thought, I'll go over and visit her church. And I went there. I went to the prayer room as I promised this her. This is as Victoria, I would. British this Columbia. This is Victoria, British Columbia. Okay. And I was shocked out of. My, there's a hundred people kneeling, praying at one time. And I thought, well, in Rome, do as the Romans do. So I grabbed a vacant chair. It was an old-fashioned one with rungs on it. And when I held on it, it was just like I was hooked up. And I thought, they even paw you in this church without getting permission. I opened my eyes, and there's no one there. But I could feel these hands in my hands, and, and like electricity going Whose through hands me. were in your hands? I, I thought. It could be an angel, it could be God, but I was scared. I was totally scared. So it felt like electricity yes, was going through? Yes, yes. And I knew what that was like as a kid in high school. I could take electricity when six-foot guys would keel over when we were in a circle with a generator. And this was just like I was hooked up. And it took about half an hour, but it just went through wave after wave. And I Just never... out of curiosity, what was God doing to you when that happened? Ah. I don't know if anyone's ever asked you. I had never been. A, I've, I've, something was removed and something new came in, and I've never been the same again. I think, I think the Holy Spirit took over in a way I've never had happen before. Well, what happened next? I got home, and I came back to church to see what that crazy church was like in a quieter time. And I knelt down, and suddenly I quoted Psalm 100 without... I, I'd memorized it as a kid, but I hadn't quoted it. I knew I couldn't have done it. And here this happened. The minister came over and said, What's happened to you? Have, you? have you received the Holy Spirit? I said, I don't know. He said, Do you speak in tongues? I said, No. He said, well, That was prophecy. I said, It was? So all of a sudden, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, discerning the spirits, the gift of prophecy were moving powerfully in my life, and I didn't even know what was going on. Well, the, the, these are gifts when the Spirit of God comes on yes. you. Yes. Tell me, tell me an example of each one. How, how, how were you moving in word of knowledge? Okay. I said, God, I want to share you. And so he said, all right. Uh, I'll set it up. And that, I got off from uh, the naval ship. I was a able to lodge ashore. And as I walked by a door, a stream of kids came out and stopped me. And I looked down at these kids and wondered what they wanted. One said, Mister, we're playing truth and consequences. And I got consequences. And my consequences are, I've got to ask the first guy who goes by our home how to get to heaven. How do I Good get question. to heaven? <laughs> I said, God, I want it to witness, but I, I guess I'm not ready for it. I stumbled through and got something out to those poor kids. But the word of knowledge showed me something at that time that God answers prayer and he's supernatural. And I better get with it and study and learn how to lead a soul to know God the way I knew him. Now, you found yourself in the great revival of 1948 right. in Canada. Yes. With what's going on today on the face of this earth, is there anything of the same magnitude of what you saw in 1948? Not in my estimation. People ask me, well, what about Toronto? I said, it's God. What about Pensacola and Brownsville? I said, it's God. Then they said, why aren't you closely connected with it? Well, I said, in 1948, it was God too. But in Ezekiel's river of Ezekiel 47, uh, Toronto, your ankles. Up to, you know, the, 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 the Holy Spirit's up to yeah. your ankles. All right. To your knees. But so the last foot to your knees. was your loins. Well, I want to find out more about the, the Holy Spirit coming up to your loins. As a matter of fact, I'm ready to <laughs> swim in it. We'll be right back after this. We'll return with Sid Roth and It's Supernatural right after this. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, and I'm here with Jim Watt. This is a man that experienced the waters of the Spirit of God in one of the greatest revivals in history that happened in Canada about 1948. People like uh, William Branham. William Branham, tell me about him. Well, 
William Branham had an angel come to him and said, as you will follow me and get people to believe my word, if whatever their problems are, not even cancer will stand before your prayer of faith. I've been in 50 of his meetings, and I've seen miracles that are just mind-boggling. That's about all one can say. Now, an angel would, would come into the meeting and, and uh, speak to him? What, what would happen? Well, he would start a meeting and just talk to you the way we're talking mm -hmm. together. And, uh, and uh, he would say, now, the angel hasn't come yet. So we'll just sort of visit until he comes. And all of a sudden, a startled look will come over the person of the guest. And he'll say, you felt something you've never felt before, didn't you? That's the angel. He just came. And then, by the power of the angel, he had a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom where he could discern any problem that that person had. And then he would, by a word of faith, pray for them and miracles You mean would take people place. didn't say, I, I have this condition, or I have cancer, I have a heart attack. He would say, you have cancer, you have a heart attack? Are you, is that what you're that saying? That is correct. He would have a prayer card. And uh, my friend, uh, I had a friend by the name of Earn that was his business manager, and he saw every card, but Branham didn't. And Branham would say exactly what was on those cards, and Baxter said he never missed once. And those that he had a vision for, infallibly, every one of them was healed. Tell me uh, about the miracle that really caused the, the uh, great revival in 48 to, to just jump when they went to a brand new meeting. You right. were telling me that. This happened lunch. in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. I think it was 1947, and when Branham was there, maybe four to 6,000 people were present. And that afternoon as he's praying, he saw a man standing before him, born with iris and pupils undifferentiated, just a glob. Mm. And then as he prayed- Both eyes? Both eyes. He saw the iris separate and a pupil form, and suddenly the man screamed, I can see, I can see. That night, when the prayer line came, this right, wait, man, he saw this in a vision. In a vision. In the afternoon. In the afternoon. And, and that night he saw that the man, man in the line. That literal man he saw in the vision was standing before him. He stopped the meeting, told them about the vision, and he said, When I see a vision, the person is infallibly healed. He said, I would like every minister to come forward and stand on the platform. 300 came forward. He said, I wish I could have you all stand, but there isn't room in the platform. What effect did it have on the ministers that saw this? It shook them so much that when they saw it, these people who later on went to North Battleford never lost the impetus of the challenge of that moment. And they fasted and prayed up to 40 days, seeking God, believing God. And, and God poured out of his spirit. And it, in, in just a matter of months, all over the nation and all over the United States, they had heard God was visiting this place, this little town in northern Canada. Tell me about that baby that had the head three times the size of water head. This happened in Bismarck, North Dakota, 1949. My wife and I were in meetings, hot, no air conditioning, and the parents brought in this little baby. And the, you could just feel the, the pain and anguish of the people as they saw this little one. And then as, as uh, William Branham prayed for this baby, you could watch this, it's, I don't know what they call it, water head or water mm -hmm. baby, but we just watched it go down to a normal head what right is in that, front of her eyes. What does that do to you <laughs> when you see a miracle, a creative miracle like that? You say, God can do anything. He can, he can forgive sins. He can heal bodies. There's nothing impossible with a God who can touch you really, in you compassion believe, a little you really, baby like that. You really believe yeah. that? Yes, I do. Now, yes, I do. Help, help me out a little bit. You told me that this revival was greater than anything going on today, and one of the reasons that God blessed it is they understood the Jewish or the biblical festivals. What's the tie-in? Okay, about 10 years before... I, I went to their Bible school in 45. In 1935, it had started in Star City, Saskatchewan, under a guy by the name of George Houghton, just a farmer mm -hmm. guy, in two years Bible college. And, and, and he started whole, having the Feast of Pentecost, or Shavuot, every year. And then uh, 
they, they got interested in, they did it because they felt this was part of our Christian roots. And then they later on added the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Passover, and they, they brought everything back and started to live it. And I think God was pleased that they were getting back to a biblical way of celebrating the cycle of the year. And this was one of the key reasons why God visited them in that little town of 4,000 way up in northern Canada. One of the things I've noticed, I can't really explain it, but I've noticed that when I speak on biblical, Jewish biblical festivals, the anointing yes. or the presence of God yes. goes up. Why do you figure it's so important to God? When I was a kid of 44, well, I was 20, 21, uh, I went back to my a uh, lady I delivered papers to and I asked her this question. I said, I, I'm, I'm a new Christian. I need answers. Can you help me? And uh, she said, while I'm talking to you, God is telling me I'm to share with you the cycle of the feasts of the Bible. And she shared with me that Jesus fulfilled Passover when he died for our sins. The Holy Spirit fulfilled Pentecost when he came to empower us. But when Jesus comes again at the Feast of Tabernacles, he will cause peace on the earth when men cannot bring peace. And I taught this to the students at North Battleford. And when I taught these things, the anointing was so strong. And a guy by the name of George Warnock, who lives in Creston, British Columbia, said, I knew these things, but the Spirit just grabbed me when you taught them. And he said, I couldn't rest until I wrote a book called The Feast of Tabernacles, and it's gone all over the world in many languages. Now, is there any significance that this great outpouring started in 1948 when Israel became a nation? Yes. Is there a tie in between? Yes. Let's talk about that when I come back. I'll be right back. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, and we are touching on something that few people understand. There is actually a tie-in between what happens to natural Israel and what happens to the church or Christians. For instance, we were talking about 1948. Right. In 1948, Israel became a nation. You right. can't get much more significant than That's that right. with Israel. They tie together. But what happened to the church? Uh, the church in 48 had this outpouring of the Spirit and they, star they started to understand that the church is founded on apostles and prophets. I didn't know what that meant, but it, it talks about that in the Bible. And they started raising up apostles and prophets in 1948. They started having presbytery meetings like they did for Timothy. And they'd lay hands on him and, and uh, gifts of the Spirit would come in him. He was able to war good warfare. Marvelous things happened. And uh, it, it, all of these things spread like wildfire. And people who didn't even know God said, there's something going on there. Let's go in and see. And all of this, a uh, heavenly choir came back, worship in the spirit, such as hadn't been seen in 20, 30 years. And people would come to hear it, and they would find God. They, he what would, would they come to hear? Well, they heard this heavenly choir. And what do one, you mean by a heavenly choir? Well, this one guy said, it was everybody singing as the spirit gave them harmony to sing together. Some of them even saw angels join us at the same time. And two guys in Edmonton where this was restored to the church heard it and they said, what are we hearing? And he says, it's an organ. No, he said, it's a choir. He says, an organ and a choir. They said, let's go and find out. And they followed their ears to this church about six blocks away and both of them became Christians through the manifestation of this. Tell me other parallels between Israel and the church. I think one of the interesting things that happened uh, with Israel was when Theodore Herzl founded Zionism in 1897. And he recognized there's no hope for Jews unless they have their homeland. They're going to be persecuted in every country of the world. And so Zionism was founded to help Israel get an, another nation. But at that same time, at the turn of the century, Topeka, Kansas, had an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Then there was what we call the Welsh Revival in 1904 and the Pentecostal Revival. So at the same time, at the turn of the century, when Israel was visited to start preparing for their homeland, and incidentally, 1897, 50 years to the day, the United Nations in San Francisco voted 
two-thirds majority, including Russia, that Israel could be a nation and again. And of course, the Bible itself said that this would happen. Yes. I mean, this is a fulfilled yes. Bible prophecy that we're talking about. But there is an explosion in God's spirit every time God deals sovereignly with Israel. Yes. Tell me some others. Okay, 1967 is my favorite because uh, Jerusalem came to Israel once again. And God says, when the Gentiles no longer trod the seats of Jerusalem, then watch up. Something's going to happen in all the world for whether we're believers or not believers. It's going to be good for all of us together. And uh, so I watched 67 with a great deal of interest. And in that same time, there were healing evangelists over our country that were helping people in their bodies as well as their minds and their souls. And it was just everywhere. Men like T.L. Osborne, it was just uh, 100,000 people would come to meetings in Muslim countries. And it, it, these two things were happening in a parallel way in 1967. When Jerusalem was yes. in Jewish hands, yes. which Jesus said that Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles until the fullness That's it. of the Jewish uh, Gentiles come in. Yes. And so that means the fullness had come in and that means the Jewish people were back in the land and explosion, right. healing. What happened uh, right. next? Well, 73 was the Yom Kippur War, and it, it, it looked like there may have been a bit of pride in Israel, and they weren't walking as softly as they could, so they nearly lost that war. But then God came in, and they took it over. In 73, uh, uh, there's a, a revival, which we call the... Um, charismatic revival broke loose around that time. And uh, it spread all over the world and Episcopalians and Presbyterians and Methodists and Mennonites and you name it, Catholics. I had no problem with God visiting them. But when he visited the hippies, that bugged me. I said, God, if I were you, I wouldn't have visited <laughs> those bibbed overhaul and We had the Jesus people. Yeah, yeah. And he said, that's why you're not God. I said, pardon me. <laughs> but I, I, I would be driving behind one of them, and my, I would say, is it a, a she, him or her? My wife said, it's a shim. Then I get curious <laughs> and speed up and pass it, and she had a beard. <laughs> and, and, and yet God was visiting these people, and they became great as evangelists. They baptized 1100 one summer. I taught them on how to. Uh, I'll tell you repent. what. Let's. What happened next? Oh, uh, let's see. Um, with Israel. Yes. With Israel, I would say that the next great thing was probably the Gulf War, where 39 right. scuds came down right. at that time, and at that very time, in the church, Soviet Russia ceased. Russia opened its doors, and, uh, and there have been uh, nearly one million Jews have come out of Soviet Russia and the former Soviets down to Israel. And I think that is one of the most outstanding things one could ever believe for. You told me that, that you, you heard that these great men of God we're talking about from the great 48 revival said that there would be a greater revival. How much greater would the uh, healing anointing be that's coming in the future? Um, Smith Wigglesworth said that the 1948, he said in the late 40s, a move of God shall come, a sort of a revival, and it will do good things, but then problems will come and it'll fade away. But then another wave will come in so powerful that won't stop till God consummates this age and God and Jesus returns and the earth has peace upon it. And he said that second wave will be a thousandfold to what the first wave was. What I saw in 48. A thousandfold? A thousandfold. And, and we're not even <laughs> seeing it right now? That's right. And there'll be a thousandfold? A thousandfold. What will trigger this thousandfold? I know. I know what's going to trigger it when the Bible refers to one new man. When Jew and Gentile become one new man in Messiah, yes. there will be a power explosion yes. in Israel. You're going to see evangelism like the world has never seen because the word of the Lord 
will go out of Zion and you're going to see red hot Jewish evangelists reaching Arabs. You want to see peace on this earth? You're going to see miracles. Yeah. What, what we've just heard on this telecast is nothing compared to the miracles that we're going to see very shortly. I believe that what Catherine Kuhlman said is true. She said, I see a day coming in which these new creation people, Jew and Gentile, one new man in Messiah will go into hospitals and clear the whole hospitals out. Do you know why? It's going to be the anointing. This Branham, you told me that people when pictures would see uh, light all over his head. Right. That lights the spirit of the right. living God. Right. And I'm ready. Is Jesus your Messiah and Lord? If not, you're not ready. Repent of your sins right. and say, I'm ready. I'm ready for the greatest move of God in the history of this earth. Who knows if you've not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I believe you have. I believe this is your moment and your destiny. Choice is yours.